As February of 2023 is already here, a new update is coming to the game and you came to this video to find out everything about it. So without further ado, let's see what this month's update is bringing to the game. The biggest addition to the game this month is the introduction of the industrial system. The system brings a set of new items which can be used to automate many parts of regular base activities by attaching them to previously existing base items. I'll go through all the new items as well as what they can be attached to and their basic properties such as crafting costs and power usage, and then we'll take a look at a simple base idea for optimization. The most important new item that drives the industrial system is the conveyor, which moves items around in the new system. They can be researched for 20 scrap and crafted for 75 metal fragments at a level 1 workbench. It uses 1 power when placed, and once placed, pressing E on a conveyor can be used to set the item filters for it, which designates which items the conveyor will forward from the input pipe. This filter feature can be used for sorting items. You can also set a limit for the amount of that item that can be present in the target element. This can stop furnaces, for example, from getting overloaded. The other important item for establishing automated bases is the pipe tool, which is similar to the wire tool but can be used to create pipes between industrial elements. These pipes enable items to travel between the connected elements. And to help manage pipes, pressing R while placing one will change the color of the pipe, which is just like how wires and hoses work. The pipe tool is a default blueprint and can be crafted for two high quality metal at a level 1 workbench. The next important item is the storage adapter, which can be used to hook any kind of item with storage slots up to the system. This includes boxes, furnaces, tool cupboards, lockers, vending machines, refineries and fridges. They can be researched for 20 scrap and crafted for 100 metal fragments at a level 1 workbench. The storage adapter does not use any power. The industrial splitter is similar to the normal splitter in that it splits the input pipe into three separate pipes. These new pipes divide the transported items equally unless a filtering conveyor is placed on the other end. They can be researched for 20 scrap and crafted for 75 metal fragments at a level 1 workbench. The final pipe element is the industrial combiner, which is effectively a reverse splitter as it combines three input pipes into one output. They can be researched for 20 scrap and crafted for 75 metal fragments at a level 1 workbench. An important automating element is the industrial crafter, which can be placed on top of a workbench and used to automatically craft the specified items. The crafted item can be set by inserting a blueprint of the item in question. Once the blueprint is inserted, the crafter must be supplied with the necessary raw materials required for the craft, and will begin to craft the requested item. They can be researched for 75 scrap and crafted for 3 high quality metal and 2 tech trash at a level 2 workbench. And the final new item that was added along with the industrial items is the electric furnace. Just as its name implies, it is a furnace that is powered by electricity. The furnace uses 3 power and spouts resources around 35% faster than regular wood powered furnaces. The downside to these furnaces however is that they don't produce charcoal at all. They can be researched for 75 scrap and can be crafted for 5 high quality metal and 200 metal fragments at a level 2 workbench. For a quick example, let's see how to make a drop box that automatically sorts your farm doors into different boxes. First, place down the drop box as well as the 3 boxes you want to use. Next, attach storage adapters to them. Next, place down a splitter and 3 conveyors. Now hook the conveyors up to a power source using the pass-through slots on your conveyors. Hook the splitter up to the input drop box and hook the outputs up to the three conveyors. Now configure the item filters for your three ore types and hook the output boxes up with the conveyors. Now you can turn on the conveyors and you have successfully built a system that automatically sorts your ores from your drop box. A few quality of life changes were made to code locks this month. The default option when placing a code lock will be to change the lock code. The default option when the lock is unlocked will be to lock it, and open door is now the default option when trying to open a door with no building privilege. In an attempt to make the loot from train wagons more enticing, the loot they have has been slightly buffed across the board, so you should expect a bit more resources and better crates on average when looting train wagons. Finally, here's a list of other changes coming to the game this month. Mushrooms are now red in your inventory instead of brown, and the support for Hapis has been officially dropped. So that's it from me, I've been Memish, and you're now up to speed about the latest news in Rust. If you feel like this video helped you, consider subscribing, joining the Discord server, or maybe even contributing financially to help the channel. Special thanks to Bother Nickel, Raven the Messenger, and Rasvan Folk for supporting me, and have a great wipe everyone.